They took everything from me. Then they put me in this hole. So I could sit and think all day long about what I'd lost. My freedom, my wife, even my pride. It was hard to know which one I missed the most. Sometimes when I'm locked up, I swore I heard the man with the plane coming back to get me. But none of it was real. It was just my head going to mush. But then, one day, I had a visitor. And that's when everything changed. He said his name was Calypso. He ran some kind of weird contest, and he was looking for people like me to be a part of it. He told me if I won, I could have the one thing my heart desired. I may be no rocket scientist, but I know opportunity when I see it. That pilot had taken a piece of my life and twisted it all around. How could I refuse the chance for revenge? When I passed out in my truck, I dreamed about the farm. I guess I must have been thinking back to the day when everything went wrong. I remember it so well. We was two weeks from harvest. I was checking out the crop when I heard this noise up in the air. There were no dust and schedule that afternoon. I hollered for the guy to stop, but it just kept coming. I didn't know what was happening at first. I couldn't breathe. And my heart was beating so fast. Thank the Lord, I passed out real quick. I thought I was dead. I must have been out for hours. And when I woke up, well, my God, what had happened to me? My first thought was to get home to Annie. She was real smart. She'd figure out what to do. But when I got there, I guess she'd already figured out something else. I heard them laughing, talking about how they'd go the next week, try to collect the life insurance. Everything hurt. My face, my mind, my heart. I remember grabbing for the closest thing I could find. I just lost it. I'd hunt that pilot down sooner or later. But for now, it was strictly between me and Anne. I've been hitting Annie's body for well over an hour. You couldn't even tell who she was no more. There's a man out there who took my wife and turned me into a freak. When I win this contest, he's gonna pay for what he done. I'd won the contest, and now it was my turn to collect. I went to see Calypso, and just as promised, he delivered the goods. I knew right from the start, he'd get me the revenge I was craving. When we went back to the farm, Calypso said he had a little surprise for me. Somehow he'd done it. He'd found that bastard who made me kill Annie. Son of a bitch even brought his plane with him. 
Calypso said all I had to do to get my prize was step aboard. It was a one-way ticket to my heart's desire. That pilot was taking everything from me. It was right time he learned how it felt. It may have been only the second time I killed someone, but it felt so damn good. I think I was beginning to see my true calling. So I done gave up farming and moved into the city. In a place like that, well, who knows what kind of trouble an old redneck like me could get into. The Lord does work in mysterious ways. He giveth and he taketh away. So it was with my freedom. In my years alone, in that dark place, I would often hear a voice calling to me from within. You are my chosen one, Jebediah. You are my child, here to do my bidding. Truly, I believe there would be no escape from the demon inside me. I wasn't even a real preacher. I was an evangelist, rejected by the church. I didn't have the strength to fight the demon alone. But one day, I was given a chance for salvation. His name was Calypso. He came to me with a proposition. If I won his contest, he would reveal the truth. It had been two years since the beast had entered my mind, controlling my actions making others believe I was responsible for those killings. But now, I had a second chance. I accepted the offer willingly. All I had to do was win, and a path back into the light would be opened unto me. To that fateful night, I had been approached by a young couple who brought to me their child. I was to perform one of my most important duties, an exorcism. But the beast was too powerful. Even as I ministered to the child, the demon brought its foul influence upon me and entered my mind. My soul was trapped. All I could do was cry out inside as I tore that church apart. The demon's hatred raged all around, killing everyone in the church. Countless millions of years, it had been hounded by the warriors of God. And now, it was going to make me pay. What went over there? This is the point. And then, the creature abandoned me, right when I needed it the most. Get your hands in the air! Do it! Do it now! Every waking hour since, I've feared the demon. But now I have a second chance. When I win this contest, I know the Lord will welcome me back with open arms. You're in violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. The contest was mercifully at an end. I had triumphed over the darkness. I visited Calypso. It was time for him to prove my innocence and clear my name. And yet, he seemed hesitant. 
I made no promise to clear your name, he said. I only promised to show you the truth. And the truth, he said, was that the demon wasn't real. The voice inside me was a figment of my imagination. My God, it was all in my mind. The exorcism? It wasn't an exorcism at all. It was simply a baptism. It was Judgment Day in that church, and I was the Angel of Death! The truth had been delivered indeed, but not by God, but by Calypso. He was right. I was, as they say, insane. My whole life I've been trying to silence that voice. I even performed rituals to show my loyalty to God in hopes that he would save me. But nothing worked. A man cannot hide from himself. There is only one path before me. Two years I've been locked away. Not a day went by I didn't pray to God. But I knew even he wouldn't forgive me for what I'd done. See, God only has time for those who deserve his mercy. I just didn't qualify. But then one day I had this visitor. I knew Calypso by reputation. You don't spend 10 years on the force without knowing every dirtbag in Midtown. Seems he wanted me in his contest. He said if I won, he'd ease my pain. My God! He knew! How could he have known? Calypso said if I won the game, I'd get a chance to undo the big mistake that was eating at my soul. Redemption. That's a big thing to offer a man without a hope in hell. How can I refuse? As I drifted away, the torment began again. The same torment I'd endured a thousand nights and days before. I began to remember. It happened a couple of years back. We were out across from the Northside Apartments. There'd been reports of terrorist activity in the building. When we got there, we found some kind of doomsday cult had set up shop inside. We were sent there to take them out. These guys were real psychos, desperate as hell, holed up like rats in a cage. But now their little hideaway was a kill zone, and I had them right in my sights. I dealt with a lot of dirt bags before, but for some reason, this was different. All units open fire! Open fire! Shoot the kill! All these years, trying to make a difference, and for what? So that we could arrest these scum suckers and watch them walk free the same afternoon? My rage got the better of me. I couldn't focus. I wanted to send these killers to hell where they belonged. I got them. But not before I made the biggest mistake of my life. I'd let my emotions cloud my judgment. It cost me. But it cost someone else even more. Oh my god. What had I done? Those people were dead, and it was all my fault. There was only one way out. But that way was closed. I was going to have to live with it for the rest of my life, and nothing I could do would ever take away the pain. Until
until now. You're in violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. won the contest. Now it was time to see if the rumors were true. Did Calypso really have the power to give me a second chance? He asked if I really wanted a second chance. If I understood the risks. But I wasn't going to screw up twice. This time, it was all going to work out. I demanded my prize. And just like that, I was back. I knew what to do this time. I had to contain my anger. I had to focus. That little girl was going to be safe. It was my sworn duty both to her and to myself. He's drawing a weapon. All units open fire. Open fire. Shoot to kill. I made sure every single bullet found the right target this time. That dirt bag went down like a puppet with the strings cut. Terrorist is down. Terrorist is down. Great shooting agent. It wasn't over, not until I knew those people were safe. They were shaken but alive. Calypso had done it. I never thought it could be like... Units. Target is knocked down. Target is still hot. I was so close to making it right. Agent! Agent Stone, report in! Are you hit? Here, you lose track of time. Hours melt into days. Days turn into years. Third years in my case. After so much time in solitary, I should get better. But in my heart, I always knew there was no cure for what happened to me. But I kept on hoping. I knew if I waited long enough, I'd get revenge against the man who destroyed my... But I could only wait so long. Every day, the vision got worse. Soon I wouldn't be able to tell reality from my nightmares. But then, my life changed. He called himself Calypso. He said he ran a contest. Winner take all. In my case, first prize meant getting even on my sanity. How could I refuse? Agreed to play. into some stinking hole, 25 feet below the ground. Benny was in bad shape. I didn't know how long he was gonna hold out. Seems like forever I was screaming for someone to come and help him. Then one day, we had a visitor. 
The guy was an advisor to the Vietnamese. And he had his own unique idea of torture. Starvation. Then he was on his last legs, and I wasn't far behind. Five days without any food will bring any man to the edge. And the advisor said the only way I was going to survive was to eat. He gave me a knife and started laughing. He said if I wanted food, I'd have to make do with whatever I could find in the hole. I tried to block out what was happening. I knew what he wanted me to do, but there was no way I was going to give him the satisfaction. Benny died two days later. I couldn't look at him. I didn't even want to think about it. It's amazing the things you'll do to survive. I think Benny would have understood. They say the mind bends and twists in order to deal with the horrors of life. I think my mind bent so much it snapped in two. When a platoon of GIs freed me two weeks later, they tried to take the helmet off. I killed four of them before they took me down. After that, they shipped me back to the States and put me in the asylum. But now I have a chance to get even with the man who pushed me over the edge. It made Benny die. Calypso. Turns out he was a man of his word. He told me it was time for a reunion. After all these years, the advisor looked exactly the same. He didn't know who I was, but I recognized him. I'd been seeing his face in my nightmares for 30 years. Calypso had one more special prize for me. Dinner for one. Thirty years is a long time to be locked away. You get kind of tired of asylum food. But after all this time, something new was on the menu. As much as I hated to admit it, over the years I developed a special craving. For human flesh. Doctors said it was some kind of amnesia. No one could figure out who I was or where I came from. There were some days I wondered if I actually existed at all. All we had to go on were the tattoos. Somehow, they were the key to the person I was. And from the looks of them, You'd think I was a nasty piece of work. I was beginning to think I'd never discover the truth. Then, the truth just kind of waltzes in through my door. Guy's name was Calypso. He ran this contest. He tells me he can clear everything up. I tell him to get lost before I break his freaking neck. But then he shows me this picture. Me, in a suit all nice and neat, like I was actually someone important. He said there was this whole life just waiting for me. All I had to do was win his contest. How could I refuse? Now I had a chance to get the answers I needed. Let's face it, who wants to spend the rest of their life as a nobody?
must have been out for hours. At first there was just darkness, but then I started to see things, bad things. I remember now, I ran with this gang. At first we were small time, random beatings, robbery, we were nobodies. So we came up with a plan. The bomb was choice, freaking huge. When that building came down, who knew what kind of viruses and diseases would spread across the world? It was glorious, instant extinction. Finally, for the first time, we were important. We were feared. And that's it. The memories end there. I don't think I like the man I'm turning out to be. You're in violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. Test. Now it was time for the truth. I went to see Calypso. Hopefully he would know who I was. He did. Jesus! I was FBI. I'd been deep undercover for the last year trying to bust a doomsday cult in Midtown. Calypso said I was a hero. That night I rushed back into the building. I had to get that bomb as far away as I could, but there just wasn't time. So I took the quick way out. Explosion knocked me out. Now I remember. I am a hero. A hero undercover agent standing in front of number two on the FBI's 10 most wanted list. In other words, a dead man. Calypso thanked me for being such a great contestant. Then he said goodbye. I remember now. I have a family. God, I was just starting to remember. When the lights are low in this place, you get plenty of time for thinking. It must have been years I was left alone in that darkness. But when you look like I do, it's probably for the best. My life was over, but the man who did this to me, to my face, he was still out there. But one day, I had a visitor. The guy's name was Calypso. He ran this freak show contest he wanted me to be a part of. If I entered and won, he said I'd taste the payback I'd been dreaming about. I just wanted to find the son of a bitch who destroyed my life. How could I refuse? house I was always drugged up I never thought about what happened to me but now that I was out I couldn't stop thinking about it I was a boxer you never heard of me I was strictly small time one night I went up against this uh, hotshot fighter from out of state I never even saw him coming I got torn to pieces before the end of the first round my jaw was shattered my nose was broke uh, I was a mess. And some of the guys from the gym said they knew this surgeon who could fix me up, good as new. Well, maybe there were better doctors in town, but none that I could afford. Besides, I'd heard this guy was a big fan of the fights. 
Too bad old Doc made the mistake of betting on me that night. $20,000, McCutcheon. $20,000 I lost on you tonight. As I went under, all I could hear was the scraping sound of the Doc's blade and this blaring hopper music he played while he worked. With a semi-truck, the doc did a good job. I'll give him that. From what I hear, I went a little crazy. They say I busted up the hospital trying to find the guy. In the process, I tore up six, six innocent people. But now that I'm out, there ain't no place for the doc to hide. So what do you know? I was the winner. Calypso's contest was over and I was the champ. And true to his word, the man delivered the goods. I got my prize. Yes! left hook of mine. You know, that was the first time I ever knocked someone out with one punch. First time I knew I was different, I was a little girl. There was this boy I really liked. One day I finally got up the courage to tell him. He pushed me down in the mud. He called me ugly. I've been alone ever since, always waiting and hoping for that certain someone to come my way. I remember right after college, all my friends with their perfect boyfriends in their society weddings. Every time one of those bitches got hitched, I'd freak. Eventually, they had to put me on meds just to calm me down. But then one day, in the asylum, I had a visitor. The gentleman's name was Calypso. He said if I won his game, I'd never have to be alone again. I was asleep for hours, dreaming about weddings. In fact, one very special wedding. I was one of the bridesmaids as usual. My friend Kristen, she was the one getting married. Can you believe what she did? She actually had the nerve to throw the bouquet to me, that little bitch. Looking back, I'm not sure it was such a good idea to come off my medication. Mary, Mary, quite contrary. You're just an ugly, fat cow. <laughs> I think that day, my heart just snapped in two. And I think my mind did the same. So I grabbed the closest thing I could find, and then I wasn't really sure what I did. 
If I wasn't going to have a man, then no one was. I dragged Kristen's fat, ugly body into one of the dressing rooms and bolted the door. Standing there in Kristen's dress, I realized I was the most beautiful bride I had ever seen. When I win this contest, Calypso will find me a man who thinks so too. I'm sure there were quite a few sour faces in town when all the girls learned I'd won the contest. I demanded my prize from Calypso. I wanted to meet my true love. Calypso delivered. It was my darling, my sweetheart, and he was gorgeous. Calypso told me he had to make a few modifications, but what man doesn't need a little adjusting here and there? As he held me in his big, strong arms, he leaned in to whisper something in my ear. To this day, I still can't believe what he said. I will never love you. My god, I was so close. But this wasn't my true love at all. He wasn't anything like the man I thought he was. Certainly not good enough for a girl like me. My Prince Charming is out there. I know he is, and I'll find him. Even if I have to go through each and every man, one at a time. I was a bad girl one time. And now I'm going to pay for what I did forever and ever and ever. I should have done what I was told. I should have been more careful. I shouldn't have defied Mr. Creel. That's why he did this to me. I'd been alone for so long. But then, one day, I had a visitor. His name was Calypso. He said he could make it all better. He said we were going to play a game. It was the key. The only one that could open my mask. Seven years I'd been locked away inside my doll face. If I won the contest, I'd get the key. But I've been so bad. I really deserve to be free? for hours and the whole time I was having this really scary dream I dreamed about my boss Mr. Creel working on those creepy masks he used to make it was my first real job after college I didn't want to screw it up I wanted Mr. Creel to like me but then this one day I made a terrible mistake. I didn't mean to upset him. I didn't mean to be so clumsy. But I was just so stupid. I could feel the nails crushing the mask down on my face. And to make sure the mask stayed on tight, Mr. Creel made a weird looking key. He said it would make sure the mask would never come off. Now that I think about it, maybe it wasn't all my fault. You're in 
violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. Now I was going to be free. I went to see Calypso. I told him I wanted my prize. But you know what? There's always a price to pay for something you really, really want. If I took the key, Mr. Creel was going to die. Why couldn't he just have been nice to me? Now that I had the key, I didn't want it anymore. I like my new face now, much better than the old one. It doesn't cry and it doesn't look scared and it'll always be pretty, even when I'm old and gray inside. There's a whole lot of people in the world just like Mr. Creel. Someone has to show them that they can't do bad stuff to people like me. They think it was Kelly's death that sent me over the edge. They thought I'd gone nuts. But you know what the truth is? They're the ones who should have been put away. There are tons of kids just like me. It was a relief to finally meet someone who understood. His name was Calypso. He ran this contest. He said if I won, I could fulfill Kelly's dying wish. I could avenge her death. So I told him I'd play his stupid game. Kelly was my best friend in the world. I would have died for her. Who knows, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get the chance. Being unconscious is like being in a pitch black room with no doors, no lights, and no way out. I could have stayed in that place forever. But then, the dreams began. Kelly and I were on the pier. School had just let out. We were using our tarot cards, trying to find out if this boy Kelly liked would ever notice her. It was a really bad reading. I guess if I ever needed proof that the cards actually worked, that was the day I got it. They were some jerk-off guys from school. They called us witches. One guy grabbed me, another went after Kelly. He said he'd always wanted to see if a witch could swim. I kept screaming at him, she can't swim! Kelly can't swim! <laughs> I didn't know how to swim either. There was nothing I could do. They didn't stick around to help. As Kelly went under, I heard her shouting to me. You get them, she said. You make them pay for this. And then I didn't hear her anymore. I've waited five months for this chance. Kelly trusted me with her last request. I promise I'll deliver. That's what best friends are for. I'd won Calypso's stupid game. He said it was time to claim my prize. It was time for Kelly to get her revenge. I didn't know what Calypso was getting at at first, but then I began to see revenge this way. It's what Kelly would have wanted more than anything in the world. An eye for an eye, blood for blood. It was the coat of the witch. 
It's weird. As I pushed that first pin down, I felt something give. It was like pushing into a person. And from far away, I could have sworn I heard someone screaming. It took two days for the cops to find the bodies. My dad drove this cab. He used to take me with him sometimes. I have a brother, but my dad won't let me talk about him. He says my brother became really, really bad when he started driving this ice cream truck. Me and my dad, we were like best friends. But one night, there was this passenger. He had this gun. He killed my dad and then ran. I just sat there while my dad died. But then, I had this idea. I was able to put together this controller. It made my dad alive again. I control him now. People think it's weird. They don't like it. They want to put me in a home and bury my dad. But I don't want him to leave me. I don't want to be alone. That's why I entered this contest. When I win this game, Calypso promises he'll make everything all better. You're in violation of Midtown City Code 4432. Step out of your vehicle and surrender peacefully. Time's up. I had won the contest. I went to Calypso and asked for my prize. He promised that he'd make everything all better. It was a trick. He destroyed my controller. It killed my dad. I begged my dad to come back. I even tried to put the controller back together. But Calypso wouldn't let me. He said things in time would be all better. He said he needed someone to train to take over his contest when he died. He said my brother would have been the perfect choice. But since I killed him, I was the next best thing. He said it was in my blood. You should know, she 
begged for you as I killed her. The clown is dead, but so is my wife. I will never be free. Trademark. When I killed, everyone would know it was me. The town was scared of that clown freak. <laughs> I'll show them something they'll never forget. Flashed before my eyes. 
The scale of what I'd done, the sheer volume of people I'd killed, it was breathtaking. But like all good things, it had to end sometime. When they captured me, the only thing I could think was, what a waste. All those people I hadn't killed yet. Come the night of my execution, there must have been over a thousand people gathered outside to watch me fry. I was upset about that. There should have been more. I remember there was this preacher in the observation room. I figured he was just some Bible thumper wanting to save my soul. But as it turned out, the old man had something else in mind. As I fried, he started screaming out like the freak he was. He asked God to curse me, to burden me forever in the flames of hell. It took me less than a minute to kill three police officers and get my mask back on. I never used to believe in curses. But it's been three months since that night, and the pain gets worse every day. So let me tell you something, boys and girls. I sure as hell believe in curses now. it held the blood of the man who'd cursed me on the night of my execution. He told me if I drank it, my curse would be over. But he also said, if I ever returned to my killing ways, the antidote would wear off, and the curse would come back to haunt me. I had to decide. It took me all of ten seconds. Let's face it, boys and girls. A man has to have his priorities. I killed Calypso about as well as I ever killed anyone. Now that I'm free, I'm going to be the greatest of all time.
says here you're a preacher of some kind Time or something. Time manipulation, mind reading. Oh, he has many powers. Why, he can even raise the dead. And once spawned, they are forever loyal to Calypso. But this year, I will bring him to his... Oh, demise. listen, listen. Every year this time, I got people calling in with his bull... No! You must believe Calypso is the reason for all the violence. He is the devil! <laughs> I do agree with him on one thing. It's bad out there, folks. Real bad. But I got a solution. Stay in tonight and lock your doors. Just more trash on the side of the road. Crazy. Looks like Calypso's got himself another driver for this year's contest. So many people I've killed over the years. But her, she was the only one who ever escaped. She was the one that got away. I don't blame myself. They were my first murders. Oh, boys and girls, she, well... She was a fighter. That stupid bitch. She actually hurt me. That's how she managed to escape. That. And that. Damned picture. How many years has that been? And I still think about her. I still crave her screams. And her death. She needs to be gutted. Then, I'll shove her in my icebox, and we'll be together forever. I just have to win Calypso's stupid little contest, and any prize I ask for will be mine. Calypso. They say he has many powers. When I win, he's going to send me where she's been hiding all these years and this time i'm going to finish what i started this time i'm going to make her bleed 
Sweet Tooth, my name is Calypso. Welcome to my contest. Welcome to Twisted Metal. This is Sun Springs, California, your first battleground. Quaint, all-American, peaceful, destructible. To win and advance to the next event, simply destroy all other contestants. The green wrench on your radar will guide you to your garage. When death is near, I suggest you use it. Or find one of my active health trucks for full regeneration. Good luck, sweet tooth. Survive this, and you're one step closer to your dream. Black Rock Stadium. I have to tell you, and this is just between you and I. I designed this arena to bring about the greatest loss of life in the shortest amount of time. It's like a slaughterhouse, but for people. I'm actually quite proud of it. Now if you want to survive, beware the traps. And beware of the dangers. and be ready for the layout to change lickety-split. <sighs> I love that term. Now, Sweet Tooth, there is a garage here if you get low on health. But no, there are other ways to stay alive in Black Rock. Destroy all enemies, Sweet Tooth. It's the only way for you to win. Do you like the holidays, sweet tooth? I do. I, I love to see the people so happy, so excited. Because when they die violently, they're so surprised. Am I right? No one expects to die on Christmas. Oh, and this year, I've added something new, just to shake things up a bit. The electric cage. Stay inside the cage when it's active, Sweet Tooth. And if you leave the cage, your grace period drains. And if you're out of grace and you drive outside the cage, well, Best not to think of such things. There was a time right after she escaped that I almost caught her. I could sense where she was. Her fear. It was so ripe. This would be fun. It was like Christmas morning. Every hallway filled with little gifts. Little, tiny, blood-filled gifts. So many of them tried to fight. I think they wanted to make it fun for me. I think they were happy for me. Looking back, I'm so glad I decided to take the stairs.
hated that name. It reminded me of how I hated him. How I hated being him. His stupid little life. That stupid little job. It took me years of screaming and clawing and breaking him down. Years of calling out to him, trying to get him to set me free. But he was such a coward. Then one night it happened. One night I called. And he answered. And after I got him to carve me, I killed him. For my first murders, I chose the perfect targets. The perfect family. I chose his family. Marcus, no! Marcus doesn't live here anymore. Please, no! Marcus, wait! Shut up and bleed, you motherfucker! They all died so easily. Except for her. She was a surprise. Where did she go? I'll find her. I'll fucking find her. Can't hide from me, little girl. You can't hide from daddy. Killing your own family? A nice touch, Mr. Kane. They held me back. Yes, I suppose they did. So anyhow, this is Watkins Harbor. Grimy, run down, lost hopes around every corner. Your kind of place, yes. And this is Juggernaut. He won't appear on radar, and he's very hard to kill. Every few minutes, he'll drop a new contestant onto the battlefield. So find him quick, and kill him quicker. It helps to shoot his insides while his doors are open. More damage that way. Same with the grill. Aim for Juggernaut's front to take him down fast. Stay alive, Sweet Tooth. The one that got away, you're getting so close. Welcome to Diablo Pass. Winding roads, dried blood on the asphalt, and plenty of plunges right to your death. This is Battle Race, Sweet Tooth. Every gate you miss will count against you. Miss too many, and it's an early end. Also, you should know, I've equipped every vehicle with a bomb. Race to the ghost town and hit the bomb gate to arm these explosives. Be the first back to the starting line to hit the bomb detonation plate. And blow everyone else to hell. Welcome back to Sun Springs, Sweet Tooth. As you can see, you're not alone. 
The loyal gang of Mr. Grimm, a fellow competitor, wants to keep you from your prize. If they kill you next year, one of them gets to enter my contest. So as you can imagine, they're motivated. Boss, this don't look good. They're just men, just people. The battle was over. I had killed almost everyone. But she was still out there. And Calypso knew where she was hiding. For my prize, I told Calypso to send me where she'd been all these years. Oh, tonight, I'd finally get to cut her. Take me to her now! Your wish is granted. Calypso. Calypso. Where's my god-damned prize? Look around, sweet tooth. You've been given your prize. That night, when she first encountered you, she was so traumatized. She was so damaged. The hospital just wasn't really working for her. So she checked herself out and made other arrangements. She's been dead for ten years. You can't kill me! You can't kill me! You can't ever kill me! I'll find you, Calypso! I'll fucking find you and fucking kill you! You will kill me too! I will fucking cut your insides out! My name is Daniel Grimm, and I'm an asshole. I fried people, killed people. Hell, some of the ones I killed, I know they didn't have it coming. But I wasn't always like this. My life, it used to be different. It used to be good. I'd sit up in that beat-up truck of his. Every few days, a brand new town, a brand new stadium. But even with all the fans, all the excitement, it was being in that truck with my dad that I loved the most. He was my idol. And in that get-up of his, I thought he was a damn superhero. That night I learned the truth. The world don't give a crap about you, so I figured I might as well return the favor. Doesn't take a genius to figure how it all worked out. Come on, motherfucker! Turns out, 
I'm the bad guy. But what if that one jump never happened? What if I could go back and warn him? If I die in this contest, I'm fine with that. They'll all welcome it. But if I win, I'm going back to stop him from trying that jump. I'm going back to save his life. And maybe then, my life will turn out different. Welcome to Diesel City. Its best days are long behind it. Actually reminds me of you, Mr. Grimm, but perhaps there is hope. Destroy two juggernauts before they flood the city with enemies. They won't appear on radar and their spawn rate is deadly fast. But stay strong. Your chance to change the past begins here. Welcome to the Grindhouse. Lots of enemies in a really tiny space. Oh, you're going to love this, Mr. Grimm. Don't care where they die, Calypso. Just as long as they do. You know, Mr. Grimm, I just love a good theme park, don't you? It's just about impossible to be sad in a place like this, isn't it? So much fun, so much joy. In fact, it's the kind of place Daddy would have taken you as a kid, when he was still breathing, I mean. Fuck. You. <laughs> Come on, Grim. Just a joke. I like to tease. Cursed contest has rained down upon us all. It ends tonight. Oh, it ends tonight, Calypso. And it ends with me. For my God has come and he has given me the honor of waking the suffering from their slumber of fear. And once awakened, we will all rise up. We will rise up this very night, and we shall tear down your tower of sin! Oh, I know who you are. I know who you really are. Welcome to Watkins Harbor. A great place to introduce my newest event, the Endurance Match. The enemies, motivated gang members of fellow contestants, just keep coming. Take one out, 
another appears. To win the battle, you have to reach the kill limit. It's the only way back, Mr. Grimm. The only way back to Daddy. Welcome to the battle race. Another event, another chance for you to fulfill the death wish that you've had since you saw your father's head explode. Well, since you saw your father die. Don't miss too many gates, Mr. Grimm. And please be sure to finish among the top racers to earn a little twisted surprise at the end. For this event, the happy town of Sun Springs, California will serve as your racetrack. It's a nice town, don't you think? Win this race and you'll be one step closer to going back and saving your father. Welcome to Devil's Canyon, Grim. Dollface will do anything to get her dream. You think your wish is crazy? Trust me. When it comes to crazy, she's got you beat. But don't worry. I've parked something on the battlefield to give you a fighting chance. You'll need it because Dollface, she's... Well, she's quite ambitious. As you can see. First Good luck, Mr. Grimm. Your last battle. Or your last stand begins. No! No! It's not fair! It's not fair! Fuck you, Mr. Grimm! Calypso! Save me, Calypso! That's it, Dad. She's gone. Now I'm coming back to save you. All the crap I've done. Oh, you think you're tough? Come on, motherfucker. Free it. Free it. All the people I've hurt. Please, God. You want to meet God? Well, please don't. All because of that one night. But now I can change all of that. Money, power. They say Calypso can grant any wish. But can he really send me back? Let's see if he can do the impossible. Hell of an entrance. I'm sure your dad would be proud. Send me back to save my father, Calypso. Mr. Grimm, your wish is granted. My dad kept the handgun under his seat. He never knew I knew about it. Never thought I'd go snooping around. Send me back, Calypso. I gotta admit. I'd have shot that motherfucker too. Bring it! Mr. Grimm. I'm sure your dad would be proud. London! Bring it! Mr. 
Mr. Grimm. I'm sure your dad would be proud. My name is Krista Sparks. Maybe you've heard of me. I'm going to be the world's most famous supermodel. Oh, <laughs> no, no. That's not me. That's me. And nothing will stand in my way. I'm the prettiest one. They all know that. But the competition? They never let up. Good Maya. Great. Client's gonna love this. They all try to stop me. They all wanna be me. Excuse me, Maya? But that's okay. It just makes me want to work harder. Krista, great! Client's gonna love this! Hard work and talent. That's why I'm going to make it all the way to the top. Six months, 11 operations, but something was wrong. Those other models, they'd gotten to him. They had the doctor do something to my face. Miss Sparks, it's a tiny scar. No, he was working with them. Perhaps you need a different sort of doctor. A therapist, perhaps. I'm afraid there's nothing more I can do for you. He wanted to keep me from my dream. After that... He wouldn't work on me anymore. But that's okay. I found... a different way. But now the mask... It won't come off. But when I win this contest, Calypso will help me. Calypso will set me free. And then I'll work twice as hard. Then I'll show them all. Because when you believe in your dream, there's always a way to the top. Welcome to Blackrock Stadium. I've put in some new features since the last contestants fought here. It just seems like I'm never done with the place. I've added a sky bridge for shortcuts, but watch out for the drops. And I wanted lava pits since the start. I was always just too busy to get it done. But we finally added those as well. One at each end of the arena. There are also some great weapons in the center room. But now that we've got the spikes working, you should really be careful in here. The garage is still here. As are the fools who keep showing up to watch from the sidelines. Now, if you need extra help, keep an eye out for the orb. 
stay in its beam to reach full health recovery. If you survive, I'd really love to hear what you think of the changes. I'm so close to it, I... I don't know if it's even good anymore. Best of luck, Miss Sparks. Hope to see you soon. Welcome to Ghost Town Gulch. A long forgotten town where, today, the living have come to die. To win the event, you must destroy all of your opponents. But it won't be easy. Meet Juggernaut 2.0. He's faster and stronger than ever before. And fighting two of these beasts at the same time? Well, it may very well make this event unbeatable. I'm sure you'll let me know if that's the case, yes? Good luck, Miss Sparks. I wish you the very best. The rooftops of Los Angeles, high above the City of Angels. It's the perfect place for us demons to play, don't you agree? Kill the set limit of enemies to advance to the next event. But be wary, Miss Sparks. It's a long drop from here to the ground. I'd hate to see anything happen to that beautiful face of yours. And always remember, I'll be watching. I'm always watching. I had worked so hard. But then... And the doctor... Miss Sparks, it's a tiny scar. He wanted to stop me too. But no one stops me. Because when you believe in your dream, there's always a way. All of us models had heard of him, able to turn even the ugliest girl into a star. He had lost some of his vision, along with his right to practice. But when he offered to help, what choice did I have? Six days in the mask, he said. Six days. The doctor promised I would be beautiful again. But when I went back to see him... The doctor was gone. I'm sorry, I have no listing for a Dr. Ospelik, is it? At that address or any other? No. I know he was here. And now the mask... It won't come off. I can be pretty again. I can be pretty. Please make me pretty. The mask won't come off. No matter what I try.
Calypso. You have to help me. Welcome to the bright lights of Metro Square, Miss Sparks. You've always wanted to be a star. Well, now is your chance to shine. But do be careful. Because for this event, I've told all other drivers to only target you. All at the same time. You wanted the spotlight? You wanted attention, doll face? Well, now you've got it. Enjoy. You are very close to your goal, Miss Sparks. Diesel City holds your next challenge. A race against your fellow contestants. Hit each checkpoint in order to get closer to the finish line. But the final checkpoint is moving. To keep it interesting, every vehicle, including yours, has an armed bomb hidden inside of it. Hit the final explosive checkpoint to set off the bombs on your enemies and destroy them all. Win this race, Dollface, and only one fight remains. Only one more obstacle to keep you from the fame you so covet. To his followers, Sweet Tooth was a king. He was a god, and they'll never stop worshipping him. The day he died, they began to build this in his honor. They say one day the clown will return, stronger and madder than before. For now, they roll across the land, searching for a sign of their lord's resurrection. Pity you, Krista. This is such a freak show. <laughs> hey boss, you think that clown's gonna help us bring this place down? No clue, but I can smell the crazy. <laughs> You've come so far, Krista. You fought so hard. Now, all that stands between you and the attention you so rightfully deserve is this metal beast. They think they're safe, tucked away inside their god. But they don't realize that their own weapons will be their death. They don't realize that you, dear... Those freaks are done! Now we get our wishes! Now we're gonna be supermodels! been destroyed. Now it was time to see Calypso. But I was having second thoughts about my prize. If this mask comes off, even if it worked and I'm beautiful again, I'll just be back where I was. Dealing with an endless swarm of whiny bitches with half my talent. Why climb the ladder of success when Calypso could just snap his fingers and take me straight to the top? I wanted out of this mask, but I only got one prize. And I'd rather be famous than free. Calypso, I want to be the world's most famous supermodel. Excuse me, Maya? No more struggle. No more competition. No more fighting whiny bitches over billboards. 
No more giving in to nasty photographers who just want to sleep with me. And no more selling my soul just to get time on some second-rate catwalk. No, never again. It's my turn to be number one. For my prize, you put me on the world's biggest runway. You make me the center of attention, and then, baby, you watch me shine. Your wish is granted. Oh my god, he did it. He actually did it. Is this New York? Paris? Milan? Wait, what the hell is this? This is what you asked for, Miss Sparks. I certainly hope this runway is big enough for your dreams. Calypso, you son of a bitch! Why, Miss Sparks, you were right. You do shine. if she walked out there on her own but people are saying you know people are saying it's calypso that it's his twisted oh metal. man here we go again no no now listen it's all true now there was this preacher right and he now, wait wait a minute where are the cops and all this how about the military well now look they have wishes too where and are everyone the protesters if it wasn't just crime getting bad but if this twisted metal were actually real there'd be protesters right if all this violence and death and destruction we're seeing, if it wasn't just crime getting worse, but if it was actually caused by Calypso, people would be taking up arms against this guy. They'd be pouring out into the streets trying to take Calypso out. But where is everyone? Where are all the people? Where are all the protesters? Yeah, exactly. Exactly my point. The protesters, they don't exist because the contest doesn't exist. <laughs> Twisted metal, it just ain't real. I know who you are. I know who you really are. I will stop you. I am on a mission from God, and I will not be stopped! The world must know. The world must be free of your illusions, of your madness. I know who you are. You are the beast! You are the beast!
on that night. He did cut me. But he didn't kill me. If he wanted me dead, he would have done it. He had to have known. He was too good to miss something like that. Say cheese. Cheese. He had to know. I survived. He kept me alive so I could continue his good work. So I could carry on his legacy. He kept me alive in case something happened to him. father was my hero. And Calypso killed him. Soon, I'll be strong enough to return the favor. He can even raise the dead, and once spawned, they are forever loyal to Calypso. All that anger, all that fight, all that rage you have inside. You could bring the world so much pain. I just can't let that go to waste. You understand, yes? I had this made just for you. Take your time. The trip back. It can be a bit unnerving.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Sophie. Ready to play? Thank you for playing Twisted Metal. 